Hi friends, today I am giving a lecture on example problem on inference theory. In the previous video, we are already discussed about uh, five example problems on inference rules such as a rule P, a rule T and a rule CP. Now, this is the different example on inference rules. Okay, in the previous videos, okay, they are given the premises. From that premises, we have to check whether the premises produces a valid conclusion or not. Okay, now in this video, we have to solve another different problem. So, in the different problem, they are given different statements. Okay, first, these statements can be represented by using uh, capital letters P, Q, R, S. Once we are representing that statements by using capital letters, okay, then the statements can be represented in a symbolic form. Then we are getting the premises. From that premises, we have to derive the given conclusion, okay, and check whether the conclusion is valid or not. Okay, so this is the procedure we have to follow for this given problem. Okay, now uh, the given statements, if there was a ball game, then traveling was difficult. If they arrived on time, then traveling was not difficult. They arrived on time, therefore there was no ball game. Okay, here in that one, so there was no ball game is the conclusion. There was no ball game is the conclusion. Okay, these are the given statement. From that given statements, we have to derive this conclusion. If they derive that conclusion, then we can say that this conclusion is valid conclusion. Otherwise, we can say that it was not a valid conclusion. Okay. Now, first of all, I am considering let there was a ball game. Okay. So, it can be represented by letter P. There was a ball game. Next one. Traveling was difficult. It can be denoted by letter Q. Traveling was difficult. Okay. Next, another statement. They arrived on time. Okay. It can be represented by letter R. They arrived on time. Okay. So, these are the different statements in the given problem. Okay. There was a ball game is represented by the statement P. Traveling was difficult. It was represented by statement Q. They arrived on time. It can be represented by statement R. So, now... Now, the above statements can be represented can be represented in symbolic form in symbolic form Okay. First statement, if there was a ball game, then traveling was difficult. Okay. There was a ball game can be represented by letter P. Next, traveling was difficult is represented by letter Q. In between them, what is the logical connective we are using? If there was a ball game, then traveling was difficult. So, here the logical connective is if then. 
if then logical connective is represented by the logical connective symbol conditional so that is if there was a ball game then traveling was difficult is represented by p conditional q whenever p is there was a ball game and q is there was a traveling was difficult next one if they arrived on time then traveling was not difficult okay they arrived on time can be represented by letter r next traveling was not difficult is represented by negation q traveling was difficult is letter q traveling was not difficult can be denoted by negation q okay so if they arrived on time then traveling was not difficult what is the logical connective we are using here if then okay if then connective can be represented by using conditional so or conditional negation q next one they arrived on time so they arrived on time is represented by letter r okay so these are the given premises so these are the given premises and what is the conclusion here in the above statements so the conclusion is after therefore whatever whatever the statement is given that statement can be considered as conclusion there was no ball game there was a ball game is represented by using letter p there was no ball game is represented by letter p and negation p okay so these are the given premises and this is the conclusion now from that given premises we have to derive this conclusion if they derive this conclusion from the given premises then we can say that it is a valid conclusion otherwise it was not a valid conclusion so now we have to derive this conclusion from the given premises we have to check that one okay so first i am taking this premise uh, so first i am taking first premise okay first step in the derivation okay i am taking this premise r conditional negation q is introduced into the derivation by using rule p okay next i am taking this premise is introduced into the derivation by using rule p i am taking second premise second step in the derivation so by using a rule p so this premise is introduced into the derivation okay now from that two premises we have to observe that any new formula we are getting or not okay yes a new formula we are getting according to the implication rule i11 okay so here a new formula we are getting by combining these two premises so hence we have to combine this step and this step that is 1 comma 2 so next step in the derivation that is 3 so we are getting negation q by using a rule t applied on which step 1 and 2 step 1 and 2 step and i11 so what is i11 i11 is nothing but p comma p conditional q implies q so this is the i11 formula here in the place of p r is there in the place of p r is there in the place of q negation q is there so from that one we are getting q in the place of q negation q is there okay so by using rule t from the first step and the second step and i11 formula we are getting negation q okay now 
this premise is introduced into the derivation by using rule p so after third step next we go for fourth step fourth step in the derivation this premise is introduced into the derivation that is p conditional q by using a rule p okay now from that two premises we have to derive any new formula or not yes from these two premises we have to get the new formula by using rule i12 i12 okay so here from these two steps we are getting 1 comma 2 comma 4 here this step is 1 comma 2 here this step is 4 after combining them we are getting 1 comma 2 comma 4 this is the next step in the derivation we are getting negation p by using rule t applied on which step third step and fourth step third step and fourth step and i12 so what is i12 i12 is negation q comma p conditional q so implies negation p so this is the i12 formula here negation q is there here p conditional q is there from that two premises we are getting negation p by using rule t so this is the i12 formula okay now we are getting negation p as a conclusion so therefore negation p we are getting from this three premises so therefore negation p is a valid conclusion from the given premises so that is p conditional q comma r conditional negation q comma r okay so in this way we have to solve the given problem first whatever the statements in the given problem that can be represented by uh, p q r okay once we are representing these three statements in p q r then in the form of p q r the above statements can be represented in symbolic form once we are getting the uh, symbolic form of the above statements then it can be called as premises from that given premises we have to derive the given conclusion if it is derived from the given premises then it is called as a valid conclusion otherwise it can be called as a invalid conclusion so this is the procedure we have to follow for getting the uh, conclusion from the given premises okay we have to check whether it is a valid conclusion or not okay so this is the procedure we have to follow thank you thank you for watching this video if you like this video please share this video to your friends and classmates if you like this video please subscribe my channel link so divya srinivasarao